This happened when I was 15 years old. My best friend Anthony wanted me to come over for the night, since his parents would be gone all weekend. I rode my bike over and put it in his backyard before letting myself in through his back door. We played basically every video game he had, from FIFA all the way to Call of Duty, with popcorn and other junk food spilled out all over the floor. As the night progressed, we moved from video games to watching half a movie and getting bored to doing prank calls at close to 10 o'clock. Anthony made a few calls to different pizza places. When it was my turn, I just dialed a few random numbers in hopes to get someone at their house. On say, my fourth attempt, I finally reached somebody. A guy with a deep and rough voice picked up, answering with a yeah instead of a hello. Anthony's laughing in the background made me stumble with my words mid-sentence, ultimately cracking up into laughter. I had never done a prank call, so I sucked at it. The guy on the other end was silent. I regained a straight face and tried to continue with the call. It went something like this. Uh, sir, would it be alright if I borrowed one of the wheels from your car? What's your name, kid? My name is Bob. Really? You sure it's not Anthony? It hit me like a brick. I looked up at Anthony, whose face was noticeably full of fear. I hung up the phone, not wanting to be on the line with whoever that was for another second. Anthony, who the hell was that? I asked him. I, I don't know, he told me. Does your caller ID info display your name or something? No, it shows my dad's name. We hopped on the computer and did some research, trying to figure out how it was possible to get someone's name through their phone number. It didn't make sense how he could get Anthony's name so quickly. He was way too young at the time to be on any of those personal information sharing websites. We ended up asking a question on Yahoo Answers, since no one had a similar experience. The question turned up no answers. I suggested he call his dad, but he said he wasn't supposed to have anybody over for the weekend, so he didn't want to call. We planned on sleeping in the living room, so we just resumed watching the movie that we hadn't finished from earlier. Right after the phone call had left my mind, me and Anthony looked at each other when we heard his front storm door opening, and then the doorknob to the front door began to turn. It only was able to turn about halfway before the lock restricted it. Anthony turned off the TV, and I went over to the window to see who it was. I spread the blinds open. There was a tall guy standing outside. He noticed the blinds moving, and turned to look at me. I practically threw the blinds back into place. Me and Anthony hid in the kitchen, listening for any more noises. We heard the sound of the gate to the backyard opening, as it was right outside the kitchen window. God damn it, I said. I forgot to shut the back door. Anthony urged me to run and shut it. I made it to the hallway leading to his back door, and froze. There was a silhouette standing outside the back door. I don't think he noticed me, but he was surely looking into the house. He opened the door and stepped inside. I tiptoed to the kitchen and motioned for Anthony to follow me upstairs. We made it to his room as quietly as possible, pulling the door shut to avoid making any noise. We crawled under his bed. He had cloth covering the bottom of his bed, so you couldn't see anything under it unless you actually moved the cloth. The doors downstairs all opened, each one getting closer to the stairs. Thumps finally began up the stairs, and he was right outside the door now. The door to the room opened. I could hear Anthony's breathing. It was too loud. Footsteps moved over to the closet, and then the closet opened. I could hear the coat hangers being slid around as the fabric of the jackets and coats rubbed against each other. Footsteps moved over to the bed and stopped. I felt like my heart was about to explode out of my chest. Anthony's breathing was too loud. I had to cover his mouth with my hand. Nothing but silence in the room now. We laid still for so long, I almost thought he wasn't even in the room anymore. I moved my hand away from Anthony's mouth and whispered in his ear, You think we can make a run for it? He was about to answer, when the most disturbing, memory-haunting scream I'd ever heard filled my ears 
as Anthony was seemingly dragged out from under the bed. I crawled out and saw him struggling with the man. I desperately looked around for anything to use as a weapon. I settled with the screwdriver sitting on his nightstand. I hurried over to the man and drove the screwdriver into his back. He let go of Anthony as he let out a scream of agony, giving us time to get the hell out of the house. Running onto the road would give away our position too easily. It would take too long to make it to his neighbor's house. We dove for the tree line in the woods and took cover behind a bush, watching the house. The back door opened as the man stepped outside, looking around the backyard. He then looked out to the woods. I felt his eyes pass me as he scanned through the tree line. It seemed that it was too dark for him to see us. Then he turned his head back in our direction. I ducked behind the bush. Joe, he's coming. What? Dude, get up, we gotta run. He was right. The man was approaching us fast. How could he have seen us? We ran through the woods with the leaves crunching under us, giving away our position. When Anthony tripped over something, I crouched down with him, hoping we had run far enough. Not even 20 seconds later, oncoming footsteps from the direction we were running from came fast. They slowed down only two trees away from us as we lay face down in the leaves. Moments later, the footsteps take off in another direction. We waited until we could no longer hear them and took off back in the direction of the house. While running, over the sound of leaves crushing and my heavy breathing, I could swear I heard leaves crushing from behind us. We made it back to his backyard, into his house, and this time remembering to shut the back door. We were now able to call the police. Anthony stayed on the line with them, while I patrolled the back windows making sure nobody was out there. It was so dark though, I couldn't see anything. So I did something that seems stupid today. I turned on his backyard lights, and immediately in the distance, over by the woods, I saw him, standing in front of a big tree. He turned off back into the woods and disappeared out of sight. That was the last time me or Anthony ever saw him. I would be lying if I told you we heard the occasional knocks at our windows or something cliche. No, that was it. Five years have passed and nothing has happened. Do I wonder if it was somehow linked to the prank call? Maybe. Does it make sense? Not really. But yeah, this was the story of how me and my still best friend Anthony almost died during a break-in. Me and my wife have had our fair share of arguments, but there was this one night that she wouldn't stop bitching over the stupidest shit. It got to the point where I forgot to put the toilet seat down, and she lectured me at the top of her lungs with an ear-piercing voice that I just couldn't take it anymore. I called my buddy Paul up, and he told me I could crash there for the night. I was exhausted, and I didn't need to deal with my crazy wife at the time. Paul had a huge house, which was another thing my wife always yelled at me about how all my friends have nicer houses than us. We had a few beers and had a bro chat. He suggested I stay there for as long as I needed, but I assured him I'd only stay for one night. I didn't want to be a bother. I slept in one of his guest bedrooms. Surprisingly, he has three guest bedrooms, but has only needed to use one of them so far. He never uses the other two bedrooms and only plans on using them for a party or something like that. All three guest bedrooms in the house are lined up next to each other, while Paul's bedroom is across the hall. It's a weird setup for sure, but it let me hear strange noises coming from the next room over. I assumed it was Paul doing something in there, but it quickly got annoying, so I decided to just walk over and see what was going on. I tried the doorknob, but it was locked. I cracked the door open to Paul's room and asked him what the noise was. He was already in bed as well. He didn't hear anything. Upon asking why he kept the door locked, he told me he always keeps those two doors locked as he keeps some personal belongings in there. I warned him that there was a strange noise coming from the room, and he told me to just go back to sleep and if I continue to hear it, come back to him. So I did. I went back to bed, and the noises were completely gone now. A half hour passed, I was starting to drift off to sleep at last, when I heard the slightest tap on the wall. It came from the other side, the next room over. It was followed by a faint voice. 
I jolted up from the bed and ran back to Paul's room. This time, he took me seriously. He got the key to the two doors and unlocked the one next to mine. We stepped inside and felt a breeze hit us on the way in. The window was completely open, along with the closet. We dug through the entire room. The bed had marks on it as if someone were on it. The closet was full of empty bags, and his valuable belongings that were in his drawers were gone. Paul suddenly ran out to the hallway. I was confused at first, but I caught on quickly as he was checking the other room. I was right by his side as he unlocked the door to the third guest bedroom, and the first thing we saw was a black figure jumping out the window onto the patio roof. Paul was about to jump out after him, but we instead both ran outside through the back door in hopes to catch him. He was gone already. It's a good thing we didn't catch him though, because what we found in this room was far more disturbing. The white sheets on the bed were stained with blood. The closet had the butcher knife he had been missing sitting on the floor with a few blood spots on it. And of course, all of his valuable belongings were gone. These people, most likely homeless and likely dangerous drug addicts, were living in his home for a little more than a week. He had even mentioned something about how fast his food goes, and yet he's so skinny when we were drinking. That made a lot more sense now. As far as we know, none of them were ever caught. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was my first sleepover, an important part of my childhood. It was my good friend, his name was Jordan. We were 10 years old, he had a huge basement where we could play video games until 1 in the morning and then sleep on the couches. Skipping the teeth brushing like two little rebels, we went straight to trying to get some sleep on the couches. I fell asleep with ease. I woke up at some unknown time. I realized the TV was still on, with a blank screen. It was giving off a very dim light, but it was enough to notice something in the far corner of the basement by the stairs. It was some tall object. I didn't know what it was, and I can't really describe how it looked. All I know is it almost reached the ceiling. The sound of the TV turning off and the small amount of light vanishing was almost enough to make me start screaming. I shut my eyes and just laid there motionless. I don't even remember falling back asleep. All I remember is waking up to a sudden and horrid screaming coming from upstairs. It was Jordan's mom. He woke up as well and we looked at each other before sprinting upstairs to his parents' room. His mom was sitting there crying as his dad was turning the room upside down looking for what she saw. He barged out past us looking for anybody in the house, but there was nobody in the house. No signs of entry or exit. I'm still friends with Jordan today, and the last time I have brought this up, he said his mom doesn't like to talk about it, but she did once admit she saw a tall dark figure standing by their bedroom door. I'm undoubtedly sure that's what I saw in the basement that night.